In this lesson, we're going to discuss the role and function of hard disk drives. Now today, in the modern PC, the hard disk drive is the primary storage media used to read and write data. Now back in the old days, the original PCs didn't have a hard disk drive. We stored everything, data, floppies, operating systems, everything on floppy diskettes, or if you were very wealthy, maybe a tape drive. The problem with these older mediums is the fact that they're extremely slow. Now hard disk drives, on the other hand, are very, very fast. Hard disk drives read and write magnetic information to and from a spinning disk. Let's take a look at the components within a hard disk drive. The key component within any hard disk drive are the platters. I'm going to draw a top view of the platters in a hard disk drive here, and now I'm going to draw a side view. Within a hard disk drive are stacks of platters. Now, the number of platters within a given hard disk drive depends. Very old drives may have had one or two different platters. Modern ones have four or more. These platters are made out of aluminum and they're coated with a magnetic surface material. This surface material is polished to the point where it is extremely smooth. It's mirror-like. So let's label this. This is the platter. In order to read and write information, we need to use read and write heads. Every platter inside of your hard disk drive has two read-write heads. If you were to look at it from the side, you would see that there's one head for the top and one head for the bottom of each platter. This platter has two heads, this platter has two heads, this platter has two heads, and this platter has two heads. Let's label this heads. An important thing for you to understand about these heads is the fact that they don't actually touch the surface of the platter. When this platter spins, and in a modern hard disk drive it spins extremely fast, this platter may spin on a really cheap old drive somewhere in the neighborhood of 3500 RPMs. On a mid-level quality drive, it may spin around 5000 RPMs. On a medium high-end drive, you're looking more around 7200 RPMs. And on a really high-end drive, a more expensive drive, it spins at 10,000 RPMs. This is fast. That disk is really spinning. As it spins, it actually creates a little cushion of air on the top and the bottom of the platter. It's called the Bernoulli effect. The heads, instead of actually touching the platter, float on top of this cushion of air. And this brings up a good point. If you go down and buy a hard disk drive, it comes all sealed in a case. Looks something like that from the top. And like this from the side. These cases are sealed for a very good reason. This little cushion of air on which the heads float is microscopically thin. You don't want any contaminants getting on top of this platter. Even something as small as a dust particle is large enough to actually get stuck between the head and the platter. And because these surfaces are polished so smoothly, even just a small speck of dust getting trapped between the head and the platter could scratch the surface of the platter, making it impossible to save data on it. As tempting as it may be, never open up a sealed hard disk drive unit, unless you don't want to use that drive anymore, because as soon as you open it, that drive is no good. You can't put it back together and hope that it'll work. Just the fact of opening it, letting the outside air in with all its particles and contaminants, you just destroyed, if in essence, that drive. So, keep the drive closed up. In order to move the head around on the platter to read data from different points on the disk, we have called an actuator arm.
its job is to move that head across the platter a lot like the arm on a record player so that it can read data from any given point on the surface. In the early days, these actuator arms were moved by a stepper motor. This stepper motor was similar to that that's used in a floppy disk drive. These did not work that well because these stepper motors actually wore out. And in fact, they could shift just a little bit due to temperature. If it got really hot or really cold, or if you took the PC system and turned it on its side such that the orientation of the drive changed in reference to gravity, this could affect the calibration of the actuator arm such that you couldn't read data off the disk anymore. In addition, we also had to do what was called parking the heads. Before we shut the system down, we had to find a specific point on the hard disk where the stepper motor could stop and drop the heads. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Although you might hear a lot of old tales still floating around like, well, if you format the disk in the vertical position, you better not turn it horizontal. Well, that was from the old days. Today we use what's called a voice coil motor. The voice coil motor uses magnetism. Now the stepper motor used an actual worm gear that spun and moved the head in and out. A voice coil motor uses magnetism. The motor itself never actually touches the actuator arm. And as such, the actuator arm and voice coil combination is not affected by heat or orientation or wear. As a PC technician, you're going to work a lot with hard disk drives. There's always a newer, higher capacity drive coming out and folks are always upgrading. I would dare venture to say that next to memory, the most frequently upgraded component in the PC system is probably the hard disk drive. We just can't seem to get enough space. As such, there are properties associated with hard disk drives that you need to be aware of. Let's take a look at them. These properties are referred to as the drive's geometry. The drive's geometry is defined by several different parameters. The first one is the number of heads in the system. Simply, how many heads are there? If you know the number of heads, then you can guess how many platters are in the system. Remember, every platter has two heads. Therefore, if you have a hard disk drive that has 16 heads, how many platters do you think you have? You're right, you have eight platters. Two, one for the top, one for the bottom of each platter. In addition, you need to know how many cylinders are in the hard disk drive. On a floppy disk drive, a cylinder is composed of the concentric tracks on the top and the bottom of the Mylar disk. Now when we deal with the hard disk drive, however, we're dealing with multiple platters, right? We don't just have one disk, so to speak, in the system. We may have a stack of four or eight platters. A track on a hard disk drive is the same as on a floppy disk drive. It's just one concentric circle. However, a cylinder is the set of concentric tracks on the top and the bottom of each platter in the hard disk drive. So it's the track, 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 track. Just envision a cylinder that penetrates down through all the layers of the platters. Any track that fits in this imaginary cylinder is said to be part of the cylinder. The number of cylinders is the same as the number of tracks on a single side of one of these platters. In addition, we need to be concerned with the number of sectors per track. Usually when you talk about it in the PC industry though, we just call them sectors, even though it's really sectors per track. To create a sector, we divide the hard disk up into pie-shaped wedges, much as the same way we do with a floppy disk drive. And we say the number of sectors per track is the number of sectors associated with any given track. For instance, in this example, and this isn't a real example, but if we were to calculate the sectors per track of this particular hard drive, we would say it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sectors for every track. Every track on the platter has seven sectors. Another parameter you might have to deal with, probably not so much anymore, 
is a parameter called write precompensation, usually referred to simply as WP. Now, the write precompensation parameter was used in older drives. If you look at this diagram, you'll notice that the tracks, as we go around the platter, get progressively longer. Here in the center, they're quite narrow. But as we go out here, towards the edge of the platter, they're quite long. The right precompensation parameter specifies a particular cylinder on the hard disk drive beyond which the drive controller should start writing the data bits farther apart because the tracks are longer. The last parameter you need to be familiar with, and again this isn't used much on newer drives, in fact it's probably not used at all, is called the landing zone. Usually simply abbreviated as LZ. Now on older hard disk drives that use the stepper motor, you had to pick a particular spot on the hard drive where, before you shut the system down, you were going to let the heads rest because you needed to make sure that they didn't end up dropping somewhere where you had sensitive data or data at all. You didn't want that head being dropped down on the area of the disk where you had data saved. What you did is you said, okay, right here, this particular part right here, I'm not going to save data there. That's the landing zone. That's where the stepper motor is going to drop that head before the system shuts down. That's called the landing zone. Now, hard disk drives come in a variety of different sizes. In the old days, we used to have what we called full height drives that were five and a quarter inches by three and a half inches. They were huge. I actually have one at home. It's quite fun. It's like a museum piece. People look at it and say, is that a hard drive? That's huge. It looks like a big cinder block brick. Later on, we went to what were called half-height drives that were five and a quarter inches by 1.75 inches. Later on, we went to three and a half inches by 1.75 inches. Today, most of the hard drives that you purchase at the computer store for your desktop system will be three and a half inches by one inch. Now, in addition to these three and a half inch drives, there are also two and a half inch drives. Now, these two and a half inch drives are used primarily in notebook systems. So with that, let's talk about the different characteristics of hard disk drives and the things you should consider when you're shopping around choosing a particular hard disk drive. The first thing you need to keep in mind is the interface. What do we want to do with the hard disk drive? For the average home system or the average desktop system in a business, we're probably going to go with IDE slash ATA type of hard disk drives. They're inexpensive and they're high capacity. If we're going to be implementing the hard disk drive in a system that needs higher performance, such as a server or maybe a graphics workstation where we're going to be doing a lot of hard disk read and writes, then we might want to consider another type of hard disk interface. One of the old standby standards for higher end system was the Small Computer Standard Interface or SCSI. SCSI is great. It's, in fact, it's used frequently in higher end server systems. It allows us to have many hard disk drives in the system at the same time and we can use them to mirror and duplex hard disks. Now there's a newer standard out that is really cool. It's very very fast. It makes a great hard disk interface for either a home system, desktop system, or even a server and that is Serial ATA or SATA. Now sometimes you might need a hard disk drive that's an extra hard disk drive that rests outside the system. For that you can purchase hard disk drives that use either a USB or maybe even a FireWire interface. Another consideration you should keep in mind is the capacity of the hard disk drive. If we're talking about a home system or maybe a desktop system in an office where the user is actually going to save all their important data on the hard disk of a server instead of on the local workstation, then you don't need that much capacity. Probably a 40, 60, or 80 gigabyte drive would be plenty of space. However, if we're talking about a high-end server or maybe a high-end workstation that's going to be used for multimedia development or something like that, you're going to need all the hard disk space you can get. At a bare minimum, we're talking about 100 gigabytes. If you can go upwards of 250 gigabytes, you're going to be in much better shape. In that situation, the more disk space you have, the better. Another consideration is the speed at which the platters spin. and We kind of talked about that earlier. 
We said that really cheap low-end hard drives spin as slow as like 3500 RPMs, while a really nice hard disk drive spins at 10,000 RPMs. Obviously, the faster the platters spin, the faster data can be read or written to the disk. Therefore, if performance is an issue, don't buy an inexpensive low-end hard disk drive that has a low uh, that spins at a low speed. Invest the money and purchase a hard disk drive that spins very fast. There's one other thing to keep in mind, and that's the concept of cache. With CPUs, we implement cache where the CPU can save frequently needed instructions and data so that it doesn't have to go out to the system RAM to get it all the time and thereby speeding up performance. We can do the same thing with a hard drive. We can implement memory on the hard drive itself so that it can save frequently needed um, instructions or data so that it doesn't have to reread it off the hard drive all the time and can also buffer information coming from the motherboard so that it can keep up. All those things together will help you decide which hard drive is best for the particular um, situation into which it's being implemented. In this lesson, we talked about hard disk drives. We talked about the role and function in the PC system. We talked about how hard disk drives work. We talked about the different components. We talked about the hard disk drive uh, geometry. And we also talked about the considerations you need to keep in mind when choosing a hard disk drive.